Welcome back to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for your continued support. Please continue supporting the channel by giving this video many likes. Um, if you look at Twitter today, Linturi is trending at number one and followed by Kasmuel Makore. This is because something happened today. We are at a time when Kenyans are trying to add one, two, and things are not really adding up. First of all, we are in a week after the new CSA, uh, cabinet secretaries took oath of office and they are now taking over. Mbadi has taken over, we saw Joho taking over, Opio and I took over things today. With that, people are asking, are they going to deliver? Not only that, the Gen Z's protest seems to have subsided. Many people try to associate it with the Raila, Ruto, and now Uhuru, of course, kind of alliance that ensured that the heat went down. Yes, uh, the Gen Z said they are faceless, tribeless, partyless, and leaderless. But now, as the as the momentum subsides, subsides, I mean, there are faces that can be associated with Jesus. One of them is a man who was very not known so much before the protests, Samuel Makore himself. But he's now attended very many interviews trying to articulate issues that are pertaining to Jesus and what they want. He's been in, in, in one media, media station to the other and is trying to tell Kenyans that the battle is on. It is a looter continua, a very articulate chap there. Now, today they were in uh, K24, and uh, they were with uh, this madame called uh, Marianne Keitania. Now, something happened, because I'm here to explain to you why Linturi and Kasmuel are trending. Linturi is not on studio. But Caswell is on studio, is on studio. Now a debate ensued, and Marianne Keten, who is uh, apparently a member of parliament of Aldai constituency, engaged Makore. And the topic was a very hot one that that Makore and the group should have known when to exit the stage. And that was still a proper debate because it is pertinent to the protests and what is going going on currently in, in, in the political circles. But then, I don't know whether it was deliberate or it was or, uh, subconsciously, she said when there was a crossfire there, she told Makore that I have got children, Gen Z's, who are far much better than you. And Makore did not take that lightly because he thought that as much as Keitan uh, deserves some respect, she had gone personal. And he hit right inside the nerves. He told Marian Kaitani that your children can never be better than me because you have been involved with leaders who have looted this country. And many people have uh, associated Marian Kaitani with uh, the former cabinet secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. Mitsikali Turi, who was considered to be one of the most corrupt leaders in Ruto's cabinet. Now, before I give you this video to, to just watch, I was reading because I wanted to understand, is there any proof that Marianne Keitani is associated with, the, with the, the former minister? And I was reading an auto, uh, an, a biography here, and it says, Keitani married a former colleague whom she met in her youth. And the two had one child. They divorced after 13 years. She also married former Meru senator Mithika Linturi in 2015 and uh, divorcing in 2019. So there are recorded, recorded journals and things you can read to show that actually Marianne Keitani married uh, the former senator. And that's why Makore was telling him, telling her, you've been involved with corrupt, corrupt people. Take a look at, uh, kindly check this interview.
First time. There's no, something no, you've no, said. No. You've said no, that no, you no, have no, a Gen no, Z no, that no, is no, better no, than me. Yes, far better. better. You cannot compare far me better. to your children because you have far been involved better, with men who have corrupted this country. Yeah. If you want yes, us to go yes. personal, yes. I will go personal. Yes. First time. There's no, something no, you've no, said. No, you've said no, that no, you have a Gen Z that is better than me. Yes, far better. You cannot compare me to your children because you have been involved with men who have corrupted this country. If you want us to go personal, I will go personal. Now, when you listen to the interview, you must have realized that it is one of the most chaotic interviews you you uh, personally have ever listened to. I wonder whether that journalist was in charge because everyone is talking at will. There was no control. There was no order. It 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 was not. I didn't like it. In fact, you listen to the whole because this was just part of it. You listen to the whole of that interview. It was very chaotic accusations and counter accusations you would realize that there are no even points that is how it got to a personal level and i know that if you look at the age of makore and uh, the, the the honorable keitani you would say that keitani deserves respect but let me tell you something respect is earned it, it does not just come naturally now in an interview or an interview like that Ketani needed, it was very unnecessary to go personal because when you start telling, Kate, uh, you know, Makore that I have Gen Z who are much better than you, it, it, it wasn't necessary. Then she needed not to have involved or brought in her children because when you do that, you are inviting a counter. Uh, you, you want the, 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 person, the other person to counter. And there's no other way of countering than also involving your family. Now that you see you realize that the name of Linturi is now coming in, even though Makore did not state, uh, did not call Linturi, but many people have associated uh, Keitani with that name because it was Linturi who was uh, corrupt. And and whenever you are conducting an interview, I think the, 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 the person who is in charge must control the panelists. That's why... You, you know why some people have identified and they, they would only watch certain media stations because there is order. You don't allow people to heckle and they say all this kind of, of you know, anything that they want. But then it also takes me to one thing. Gen Z's would want people that they can call their role models. Do you think Mithrika Linturi is a role model? Because it reminds us of that that uh, inept cabinet, that corrupt cabinet that Ruto that Ruto dissolved. It is only painful that instead of kicking out all of them, he brought in some of his friends. But do you think our leaders are role models? Because one of the characteristics of leaders is that you should be someone who is outstanding. Look at what is now happening, Makore. Is a young man, and it seems whatever his his sentiments, you know, corroborate sentiments of many other Gen Zs. It means that people like Mithikal and Turi do not, they don't attract, you know, respect and even sympathy from Gen Zs. Because if Keitani told Makore that I have better children than you, the first thing that you know clicked in in into Makore's mind is that. You say that your children are better than them, yet they've been sired by, you know, a person who's corrupt. It tells you that they're leaders who are never respected. They're leaders who don't deserve respect. It's because Jesus feel that they've been betrayed. The sentiments of Makore, you know, really resonates well with many of them. They feel that they've been betrayed by people who are being paid by taxpayers' money. They felt that they would use the money prudently and they've been betrayed. And it goes away a long way to telling that even William Ruto, who appointed those cabinet secretaries, and they have revived them, have recycled them, now falls in the category of, of the, 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 the Jesus look at them the same way. It, I also feel that this war is not yet over. Very soon, if William Ruto is not careful, they might just erupt because he didn't deal with the real issues. How I wish that he kicked out all of them. Just the same way he did with Mithrika Lituri. No wonder Gen Z started visiting those who voted yes for the finance bill. It tells you the pain, the pain that they have with these leaders who but continue to continue betraying them. Don't listen to them even when they tell them don't pass the finance bill. And ladies and gentlemen, this kind of crossfire 
is it goes deep it is just a tip of an iceberg but it goes deeper than that there are leaders who are never wanted by gen z's and of course by kenyans at large you remember when they went to the street it was because of the finance bill 2024 but the issue it it, it later emerged was not just the finance bill 2024 but the finance bill 2024 was just a trigger there was something bigger a corrupt cabinet wastefulness and uh, in, in the in the government leaders who keep on uh, showcasing their their opulence and their chest thumping and that's why they were mad so when you hear Marco Ure talk like this you know they are mad but then i think when we are playing politics we don't need to go personal we need to talk about issues issue-based politics that's why even during campaigns you see people say oh we ni mganga sisi tuna tunaenda kanisani they are not tangible tangible reasons why we should elect our leaders because they go personal when someone lacks point they go personal that's why when william buto campaigned in 2022 there were never issues alafu tupange hawa tupange akina mama bottom up tutoe hapa chini tuweke pale juu now when they are they, they are in in power you realize that they don't have a plan because whatever they were talking about were used as campaign gimmicks that you would wink kenyans but we do not have leaders who have got any points. They are good at heckling, name calling, blame game. They shape the blame game. That's why you check, you know, in fact, Keitani is an, 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 an epitome of real leaders. William Ruto, when confronted by issues, oh, someone wants to topple my government. It is the Ford Foundation. Oh, it is Girigadi Geshagwa. That is how our politicians be, behave. But we need to be very careful and tell them that we will not give them a chance to play around with us. 